So I use this janky setup to just turn the feature here that allows the spring to locate. For that I just use this tool. The same one I this is the same tool I used on the piston for the uh, piston wing slot so um, yeah I just push that in until it um, until the spring went on I didn't measure anything just did it by eye this is the start of drilling the ports I have the engine frame fixed vertically in the vise I'm drilling two holes one would be the exhaust port and the other creates part of the input ports and the axis created to do this at the top will be plugged as a later process. The ports are counterboard larger, one to enable a decent sized plug to be used in order to permanently block off the hole and the other allows for exhaust piping to be inserted if desired. So I've calculated what the um, top two ports should be and I'll do the bottom two later. I think they have to be drilled at a slight angle to get into the passageways that have been drilled from above but um, what I'm doing here is just I'm going to spot sort of spot drill them with the correct size drill where they should be just so that when I come to drill it at an angle to connect the ports up um, hopefully it doesn't drift off from the um, location that it's meant to be on the face because you really need that to line up with the, the port on the cylinder. I think what I'll do next is locate and drill in the same fashion the, the two ports on the bottom and then I'll work out how I'm going to hold this and what angle I need to connect the ports through. Okay so I've got this at the right angle and if you think this is a janky setup you'd be right there's no need to tell me. Um, if you're scared, just shut your eyes. So we've got some feeler gauges here propping up the uh, the top of the uh, the main body here to keep it level. Got a parallel to give us some angle and a clamp to clamp it down. And I uh, guess there's nothing else left to do other than send it. Here I'm drilling and tapping the main input port for the engine.
The cylinder lagging is a thin sheet of painted aluminium that finishes off the look of the cylinder. I covered the paint with a layer of tape to try and prevent damage to the finish. Using the vise, I put the initial bend in the metal to allow fixing to the flat parts on the side of the cylinder. I was not sure how to create the bend in the metal, so I clamped it in place and formed it around the cylinder. I had to file down the width of the lagging so that it fitted between the two cylinder end caps. This means my cylinder length is a little undersized. I did not consider the interaction with this part during machining. I scored the lagging at length and trimmed it off with scissors. Then four holes were drilled and tapped for securing the lagging to the cylinder. So that was a fairly fiddly part to make. Didn't quite get the holes all in the uh, same place or even evenly. And uh, managed to put a mark in the outside there when bending that, bending the second side once you've got it around the cylinder. There's probably a better way of doing that. Maybe calculating the length. This is the first one I've done of those, so I was dreading it because I knew it looked fiddly. And uh, I decided to use hand tools with that, like center punch it and drill it by hand, uh, just for a bit of practice. What I've done is I've, I've put a flat on the crankshaft for the uh, set screw to pinch down on. It's not in the plans, but I just decided to give that a go. I cut off the remainder of the plug and filed that down smooth. And you can't see where it was really, so hopefully that makes a good seal. I've ordered a, a bottom tap for this because I'm not sure that the threads go far enough down. At the end you can see a cone and in the centre of the cone is a hole that goes through into the port. So I'm assuming that to make an adapter for the air or steam to go into that, um, you want that to seat down into the bottom around the edge to make a seal, leaving the uh, centre open for the pressure to get inside. I've also marked and drilled from the bottom two mounting holes and additionally I removed the cylinder and wasn't happy with how the piston was sliding inside the cylinder and after some investigation I decided that the groove for the o-ring was not wide enough it was deep enough but the o-ring couldn't get fully seated in there because it was hitting the edges and it was protruding much further than what it was. It doesn't um, protrude much further than the size of the piston and the piston is a fairly close fit in the cylinder anyway. Um, so you only need a little bit of protrusion there just to just to take up that extra slack. Uh, so next up the plans call for a a hole to be drilled where the crankshaft goes through. It's a little oil port, so I'll go over to the mill and set that up. I took a file to the frame to remove any rough edges and to round off any sharp radius edges. I then sanded the surface and cleaned with alcohol solution ready for painting.
The paint was applied with a brush and I used two coats of paint. All of the other parts were polished using metal polish and a rotary tool. The key here is to take a break when the part gets too hot to hold. In addition, hold on firmly to the small parts, as they tend to fly off and lead to hours of hide and seek. The engine is now finished. I drilled the oil port here to enable the uh, crankshaft to be oiled. This nut here um, I originally did up tight while the Loctite into the cylinder was uh, curing to help ensure that the shaft was at 90 degrees to the cylinder. Now that's set, I've loosened it off to a more reasonable pressure. You just need enough to hold the cylinder onto the face of the main body. I need to make a base for it to mount to and make an adapter for the air for the engine and for the compressor to join the two together and then it will be ready for testing.